He's talked to more people face to face than any man who's ever lived. He's made the family that prays together stays together a household phrase from Bombay to Newfoundland. He's Father Patrick Payton, whose unassuming manner and deep conviction have warmed the hearts of millions across the world. Thank you for joining us in this, another one of the series called A Matter of Faith. A Matter of Faith is dedicated to the family, to your family, and to families everywhere with the conviction that the family that prays together stays together. This is the purpose of the Matter of Faith series, to help families today, to help families to realize prayer and its power, to help them overcome the problems that surround them. The Matter of Faith series features men who have reached renown, who have great accomplishments behind them, who have great responsibilities on their shoulders, and because of that, what they say cannot be taken lightly. In this particular program, we are fortunate to have a man who is a byword in the world of electronics, the world of communications. His name is Marshall McLuhan. He needs no one to introduce him. But I only want to say that for the last two hours, I was electrified myself by all that poured out from his heart and his mind. May God sanctify what he says for your benefit and mine. And we will begin, dear Marshall, by trying to let loose all the beautiful riches that you possess and that as you as I was listening to you I began to think of that deserted village poem where uh, I memorized as a little child our teacher how he could hold so much in his head and so small was the head but I was thinking of that with all that poured so easily regarding all the problems of today but the great opportunities of today and so what I would like you to um, begin with is the world we're in just now. The world of yesterday was one world, but the world we're in today that we find ourselves, whether we're priests or nuns or uh, husbands or wives or uh, fathers or mothers or children, there's something different. Would you yeah. proceed to tell us? Well, the words that came to mind as you were saying, these last bits, is that we live in the world of the instant replay. Around the planet, all the events are not only being recorded, but replayed. And the amazing thing about the replay is that it offers the means of recog, recognition. The first time is cognition, the second time is recognition. And the recognition is even deeper. I think that perhaps what you are interested in with regard to the rosary has a lot to do with the replay. I would love you to develop that. Well, it, it, it comes to mind at once that uh, much, of the com much of the complaint about the rosary, uh, rosary is repetitive is precisely replay. And it is a perpetual deepening, not a superficial uh, treatment at all. But there is in the replay a deeper awareness of the, uh, uh, of the pattern and of the uh, uh, events that have taken place, the pattern of events, the process. And so replay offers a deeper level of awareness than the, the first play. And I think the rosary is a perpetual way of deepening our awareness, and the repetitions are really very close to the world of resonance, which is itself a world of profound involvement and of insight and a feeling of at-homeness. But this is only off the cuff apropos the world we live in today. We, yes. we live in an electric simultaneous world where most of the relationships between men are now invisible. The human bond, the electric instant bond around the planet, is invisible, which is not unlike the things we're talking about in relation to the mystical body, Yes, which is entirely around us and entirely invisible, or at least mostly invisible. But the, um, we had, to, you know, been getting into some very large matters about the effects of this new environment, this new electric environment on man and his awareness of himself. 
I know we were so deep that uh, I had to get oh. to, like a, a little child to get you to explain it to me more and more and more. And so I would love you now to proceed and to say how is it and what is the cause of the darkness, the distress, the, the, that we are suffering uh, in a thousand different ways. How is it that that electronic age is contributing to that? How is it that the media is, is creating the climate for such a, a cloud to hang over us? Well, the a rapid change of environment exerts a sort of transforming, chain, all-changing power on the people who are subjected to this interface. And so for many people, the, the new electric surround uh, is a ripoff, which uh, destroys their image of themselves, their identities. All the familiar boundaries, all the familiar landmarks of their world have been eroded instantly by this electric and visible surround of information. All the institutions of our world have been given this kind of overall new treatment, a new environment of instant information. For example, we were talking about the telephone. Yes. When you go on the telephone, you are transformed. You become instantly available to your friend in Chicago, or he becomes here instantly to talk to us in Toronto. You can talk to Tokyo and to Chicago and to New York simultaneously, and this gives you a sort of dimension of an angel an almost a, a preternatural being, a disembodied spirit. In the electric age, man becomes a kind of disembodied spirit. I don't think our institutions have any way of coping with this new dimension of man, the angelic, discarnate man of the electric age, who is always in the presence of all the other men in the world. Honestly, I, I was startled now as well as a few hours ago about a thing that we just took for granted. You dial a number, and all of a sudden, you're talking to somebody uh, and, and a thousand miles away. But that you're present there. You were sent. You're People present. used to think it was the message that was sent, but in now it's the sender. Is that the medium is the message? Well, the, the medium, it's hard to know now where the medium begins, where it ends, because this tremendous electric surround of service environment, the satellites and the, uh, all the electric means, all of these are media. The media uh, have become a kind of all-encompassing, all-embracing uh, environment of uh, service. And man uh, is, uh, seems to be a very puny and uh, rather inadequate figure in this vast new ground of service. And how is it, what is the result or the effect of all that bombardment on him? Uh, I, I'd love you also to explain what you mean by interface. Yes, it's a term in chemistry, in the new quantum mechanics, the, 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 the term interface implies a resonant interval in which there are no connections in matter as understood in the new physics. But there is a perpetual resonating interval between particles or among particles. And this resonance is the interface. And it is in this interval of resonance that the action takes place. It leads on to the most uh, basic uh, matters about our own world of the dropout, because the dropout is a person who experiences the need uh, to set up more space between himself and things. He wants more room. He wants an interface. He wants a kind of resonant dialogue. He wants to rap, to chat and empathize with everybody about everything, and this it constitutes an interface of change. In dialogue, people undergo change. It isn't just the passing of gossip back and forth, but it's a kind of interrelating by which people feel they are changed, they are getting with it, they are getting involved, they are participating. All of these things, it seems to me, profoundly relate to the rosary and to the church and the mystical body, which is also amazingly instant, surround, interface, a source of change, renewal, and an endless source of nourishment to everybody.